Hi ladies, hope you are doing well today. So I am popping on because I wanted to do a video about the feminine and I'm ac actually gonna be doing a series of videos about this. I think um, just based on our interactions in the group recently, I'd asked some questions in the group and I asked them on Instagram just to get a sense of where you all are in terms of like your understanding of the feminine and your comfort with being in your feminine and what does that mean and how do I do that and why maybe I'm not doing it and so I want to do a series of videos on this um, because I think there's a lot of stuff to uncover here and there are maybe some misconceptions to correct and so this video today is going to be talking about the connection between being in your feminine or connected to your feminine and, and your intuition um, so let's dive in so what I'd love to hear from you, if you're watching right now, hi, if you are, um, or if you're catching the replay, I'd love for you to type in the comments. When I ask you, what does it mean to be in your feminine? What is your response? Like to you, what does that mean? Just like type it in the comments. I'm really curious, like what you would say in response to that and like what that means to you. Hi, hello, hello. Um, so just let me know, I'm curious. So what I heard when I asked um, this question um, was, so why are you not? Like if, if you understand what it is and you kind of have a sense of it and you don't feel like you are in your feminine often or ever, or you just don't feel comfortable being in your feminine, like why is that? Um, so some of the answers that I got to that were, being in your feminine is weak, it would mean that I would be weak. It would mean that I might be taken advantage of. It might be that I would lose control and that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, that my insecurities might be triggered. Um, so I got answers like that when I asked, okay, why not? So I'm curious for you, why, if you don't feel like you are in your feminine or you don't feel comfortable being in your feminine, why is that? So you can just put that in the comments as well. So Morgan said allowing and receiving. And uh, Kilani said being open, receptive, and fluid. Okay, awesome. So something else that I hear a lot from women is like I have trouble like getting out of my head, um, out of like that masculine, like the thinking energy, right? Out of logic in my brain. Um, and I'm often like trying to prove myself, right? Trying to sell myself, perform. Like if I'm on a date meeting a guy, like I have trouble not being in that energy. Um, so I'm just going to be talking about today one tiny aspect of being in your feminine, um, which is being in touch with and in tune with your intuition, right? And this is a feminine quality, right? The connection to our feelings, to our bodies, to our intuition, that's all a feminine aspect, right? So if you said any of those things, or if you were just like, yeah, I sort of feel like I resonate with some of those reasons about why I would maybe not feel comfortable or safe being in my feminine. What we're looking at, if, if like we're looking at the root of all of those, we're looking at like this fear of being in our bodies, right? Because the all of those things are connected to that, right? Um, and so we're looking at essentially a trauma response, right? It's a response to something that happened where you didn't feel safe. You didn't feel safe to be in your body. You didn't feel safe to feel your feelings, to express your feelings. You didn't feel safe being yourself, right? And so that got shut down. Um, and so there was some sort of dissociation. And typically what happens then is we go out of our bodies and into our heads because it feels safer to be there. And then we're in that masculine energy, right? Um, so that's dissociation, right? Maybe there was some trauma response fight, flight, freeze, fall on one of those things and it's all in our heads now, right? So we developed certain ways of being because we had to, right? And this was a survival instinct. It protected you, it got you through whatever you were going through and then it became something that was kind of like, now I just am this way and I don't know how not to be and it feels not safe to not be here because I feel like I have more control here if I'm in my head, right? And so for a lot of us, that's things that happened in childhood. So sometimes in the home, maybe there was messaging about feelings are not okay. You were sent to your room, you were isolated if you had an emotional outburst um, instead of somebody co-regulating with you and so that you learn you needed to stuff your emotions, you shouldn't feel them, uh, You would otherwise you'd be shamed, you'd be isolated, you'd be abandoned. 
maybe it was at school, there was bullying of some sort, you were made fun of, you felt shame around yourself and who you were and your responses to that, right? And so for some reason, something happened um, and we didn't think it was safe anymore to be there, right? To be in our bodies, to be in the way we felt, it would be safer to be in my head. And so uh, for many of us, that looks like um, I've decided I have to be some other way than the way that I originally was, right? So I have to be super successful then maybe I'll be loved, I'll be good enough, I have to be perfect in some certain way. Um, you know, I cannot show my emotions, showing my emotions is going to get me abandoned, made fun of. I have to perform something else, right? Other than what I am. And this is where we get in the cycle of pretending, performing, we don't feel like we can be our authentic selves. It doesn't feel safe, doesn't feel like it will be accepted. And this is all in a masculine kind of energy. And I really call this the false masculine because it's not like a healthy, way of being, right? So controlling ourselves, judging ourselves, shaming ourselves for who we are and also just for what our experience is, what we actually are feeling and going through. So, you know, for me, I remember uh, never allowing myself to cry in front of other people and I'm like a super emotional person, but I didn't feel safe to be seen doing in that like kind of state, right? That that was shameful, I, I shouldn't, couldn't be, right? No one was going to see me cry. I also became like a super perfectionist, super high achiever, um, and really that got triggered in ninth grade when I switched schools, uh, had been in the same group of kids from like first grade through eighth grade, very, very small group of kids, and then to go to ninth grade, brand new school, they had all been together, they all knew each other. I was kind of shy and not comfortable with myself, and I didn't really know how to make new friends. And so basically I watched all these other girls from the outside, like had this belief that I wouldn't be allowed in, I wouldn't be accepted, I just didn't know how to and didn't feel like I, it was safe for me to just try to integrate, right? And so my trauma response to being thrown into that situation, uh, to the loneliness, to feeling like this outsider was like, I'm just gonna focus on academics, I'm gonna be like really, really good in school, I'm gonna get like straight A's, I'm gonna be this perfectionist, right? Because essentially to get straight A's, I had to be that way, decided, right? It was exhausting, it was really hard, and I couldn't not do it, right? And this was the trauma response kicking in. So to avoid the painful feelings that I was feeling, the experience of being this new kid, the experience of being an outsider, the experience of all those emotions that I felt, um, was this got triggered as a way to not feel that, right? So I could go into my head, I could be really focused on my schoolwork, I could focus on being perfect in that sense, and that would be something I could control. And that would be flipping out of a feminine energy into this masculine, really false masculine energy of pushing, 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 achieving, accomplishing, doing energy, right? Um, so making goals, trying to get into the top colleges, right? And all the work that went into that. Um, and I literally couldn't, didn't allow myself to just be, right? Because there was so much pain there in just being whatever was there. And I didn't have the tools and the ability to just move through that, right? And so none of that was actually me. That was this identity that I took on, this overachiever, high performer. That was this role, this identity that I put on to try to have some control. Hi, Jenny, how are you? Um, and so that's what happened, right? So the person that I was underneath all of that was this feminine being, right? Like super sensitive, super imaginative, um, kind of the beat of my own drum, spent hours outside just playing and exploring and making up stories and so in my body just experiencing in the senses and so present, right? So curious, so alive, walking barefoot outside all summer long, right? Getting super dirty didn't matter. Like living in this different kind of a world, totally different place. It's just about present and now and what's here and what am I excited about, right? No agenda, just creating for the joy of it, right? Um, and then it flipped, right, in high school. And I lost that girl, the spark went out. We aren't taught about being a woman. Right? And so like high school is also a transition into kind of womanhood, at least for me, that was really that year and it was so confusing and I, there was no guide to really understand what that meant. So we aren't really taught about being a woman, right? One day you're a girl and then somehow suddenly you're, you're becoming this woman. Um, and the only thing that we're really taught about that is maybe things related to our looks, right? 
Um, so objectification, essentially, uh, being a woman is, is how you look, <laughs> right? Um, you're going to look this certain way um, and you'll get attention for that. And, and that's what it means. And that's about it, right? So we go through this transition to become a woman and, and one day we just are, but there was nothing around that to understand what that means. There are very few models for women living in their femininity, like living in their womanhood, not in a masculine energy, not in a masculine way. And our culture basically has one path to becoming an adult, and that's the masculine path, right? The doing, pursuing, action taking, goal setting, accomplishing, uh, all of that kind of energy, right? And this is all related to what I want to talk about today, which is our intuition, because when we're in that masculine energy, that's literally like neck up. It's like your head, right? It's totally disembodied. It's all our thinking, our mind, right? I want you to just think about school. Um, school is like this. It totally takes us out of our feminine because it's all about thinking what you know. It's knowledge, information, logic, right? Um, we are sitting in desks for hours on end. We cannot just move our bodies how we want. We can't just get up and, and do what we would like in the room or sit how we would like to sit or, you know, there it's very controlled, right? Even just like when you want to leave the room to go to the bathroom, controlled. So we're trained out of our connection to our bodies. And if we look at modern offices and modern work, it's the same thing, just carried on, right? So by the time that we are adults, we as women, we're not really living as women, we're living as men. And this wreaks so much havoc on our, literally our body systems, right? Because we have a 28 day cycle, our energy is different every single day of that cycle. Um, our home hormones are different for men. They have a 24 hour cycle. So it works for them, does not work for us, right? So nobody teaches us about how to connect and live through this whole other aspect of ourselves, which is that feminine, our bodies, our emotions, our senses, and our intuition is all connected. So sometimes this can even be looked down on, right? So we stop trusting our bodies and we stop trusting what they're telling us. So when women come to me and they say, you know, like, I don't trust myself. I don't know what's right for me. I'm picking the wrong guys. Uh, my picker is broken. I don't know how to choose the right guy. Like, I need help with that. I'm just like not able to trust myself in this. And this is very common. It's because we've lost touch with our feminine, which is our bodies, our feelings, our senses. We're living in our heads. And that is why this is happening. And again, this is not to shame you if this is you, because if you are living from your head, that's literally the norm in our culture and in our society and really in our world. And often if it's this trauma response to something where we had, we had to go there, right? It was a natural response to what happened in life when there was no other way and no other help to process that was offered, right? And nothing else was modeled. So the part of you that operates from your head, like neck up, it is doing the best it can do with what it had at the time. So this isn't like shaming ourselves. It's just that now it can, you can access something else. You have an opportunity to learn about something else. So when women come to work with me, one of the primary issues is that they're choosing the wrong kind of men. They're falling for men who don't commit to them or who are unavailable or abusive or emotionally toxic for them, or just really cannot meet them fully at the depth that they want to be met. And so what I find is that this comes down to the, their level of disassociation really from their bodies, their feelings, and their intuition, um, which was created through shame and this inner critic that all of us have, and for some of us it's really amped up, right? Um, that's telling us things from our head, right? Um, the wall that we build around ourselves to protect ourselves, this shell, so we don't get hurt, we aren't fully seen, and because of that, we also aren't fully loved, right? That's one of the repercussions. Um, and we can only attract somebody at the, our own level of availability and our own level of self-acceptance and self-love because we will probably push anybody else away. It, it just like won't work. Um, so what's really happened is that they're not available for an available man because that requires having our hearts open and our feelings flowing and being fully ourselves and allowing us to be fully seen. So when we're disconnected from ourselves, like from the neck down, um, then we aren't fully seeing ourselves, we aren't fully loving ourselves, we aren't fully accepting ourselves, and we are not allowing love in, right? And so the feminine is what allows love in. If you're in your masculine, you're in a giver energy, right? You are giving love, you are pursuing, you are leading, you are doing, you are like 
putting out of you, right? Whereas the feminine is receiving. And so are you open to receiving love? That's the feminine, if it's open or not, if it's activated or not, if you're in touch with it or not. So you're going to, if you're in this masculine energy, you're going to attract a more feminine man who wants to receive from you, right? And you'll burn yourself out from giving and giving and giving and receiving little, if anything, back, right? So when we are used to this masculine mode, we think that's just how it is. There must be something wrong with me or unlovable about me, and there's not. There's literally not. It's just the energy and the way that you're operating in the world. It's who you're being, what you're being. So when women tell me I can't be in my feminine, that's weak, or I'll be hurt or taken advantage of, I want you to check right now if, if you've had that fear. And I want you to check when you were hurt or when you felt like you were taken advantage of by a man, um, were you in your actual feminine? Because the feminine is your access to your feelings through your body. Your feelings are literally your compass. They are your guide. They will not steer you wrong. So usually, uh, not even usually, like 100% of the time, um, when I ask this question, like when you were hurt by that man or felt like you were taken, ad taken advantage of or felt like let on, right? Were you actually in touch with what your body and your intuition was saying, your emotions, your feelings were saying about this man? It is always true that they ignored the part of them that was warning them, the part of them that said this isn't right, the part of them that said something feels off with this man, and they went ahead and dated him anyways. And he turned out to be unavailable, cheating, noncommittal, abusive, whatever it was, right? So your feelings were what warned you, and you didn't, that you didn't actually feel comfortable. Something didn't actually feel good. It didn't actually feel quite right. Something felt off. Um, you knew, I often hear this too, and I, for myself that was true, I actually knew <laughs> that this was not the right person, that I knew he was gonna do whatever it was that he did, right? So what actually is, is the result of not living in your feminine and just living in the head up, right? The result of that um, is that you get hurt. And so actually you are more likely to be taken advantage of and hurt and quote unquote led on or taken advantage of quote unquote um, if you were living in your head because you would have then convinced yourself out of your feelings, uh, told, ignored them, said they were not valid, um, used your head and logic to convince yourself of someone or to give him a chance or a second chance and you talked yourself out of the red flags that literally your intuition, your body already felt and knew. So this is literally like gaslighting ourselves in our own inner experience um, because we're valuing logic and reason and thinking over the truth that our bodies are literally always speaking to us. And when we ignore it long enough, that manifests as that burnout, as illness, because we aren't hearing it and we've been invalidating ourselves. So, so much of the work that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients is actually to help them heal whatever trauma is there that is keeping it, them in their heads, in that performing mode, keeping walls up, judging themselves, not loving themselves, and basically disconnecting them from their intuition. Because when they learn how to really tune into that intuition and trust it with men, then they don't end up in those situations anymore. Right? And so I give them practices and exercises so they literally can know how it feels to be tapped into their intuition in their bodies, um, to know how to do that, what that feels like, right? And this is super powerful and super incredible to be able to do, not just with men, but literally anything in your life. You can always, always, always tap into that wisdom in you to know what's right for you. Your feelings are actually never wrong. So and this is the deep feelings. This is not like the surface level, right? As women, this is literally our superpower. It's the magic that we have as women, right? So that would be like asking, you know, what do you feel? What does your heart actually say? And really being able to differentiate between those different things to get out of your head and into your actual body. So you can ask questions like, how am I feeling sitting here with this man right now? What does it actually feel like when he does X, Y, Z? How does that actually feel to me? What do I actually feel in my heart, in my body? How am I feeling when I'm around this man? Am I feeling good? How does my body feel? Am I tense? Am I open? Am I light, free, feeling safe, unsafe? And, and then why? And you get to explore that then because this is your warning system. It's your signal system. It's guiding you. So we can think that we don't deserve to feel amazing around a man and then we end up 
creating not feeling amazing, right? Because we're not thinking that we deserve to feel some other way or that it's just normal to feel whatever way that we're feeling with a man that is continuing to ca like give us the results that we've been getting with a man, right? Um, and so we, we expect this is just like what's normal. This is how it is and that's not true. We get to feel different if you're actually listening to what actually feels good and what doesn't actually feel good. So it's a major breakthrough moment when my clients are able to just start doing this naturally and start to recognize way, 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 way more early on things that like I can point out for them, but also they literally have, you all have this inner compass as well. And so some of the work that I'm doing with my clients is literally just helping them reconnect with that and really trust that and know what that feels like to be tuned in and tapped into that. So of course, this is just like one tiny piece of being in your feminine, being a woman, um, being in your power as a woman. And it is only one tiny part of the, the work that I'm doing with my clients. So like, for example, for this, the next step might be um, being able to express some of the things that we're feeling, right? And in specific ways that are really feminine ways with them. So this is just one piece I wanted to talk about today, just being able to understand what intuition is and how that's connected to your feminine and the power that that actually has for you and the protection. This is the other piece, it's protecting you. It is your protection. Um, so I wanted to drop this and just give some insight into that. Um, so you can also drop in the comments, what else would you like me to talk about on feminine and femininity? Questions do you have? Um, put those in the comments because I'm going to be doing, I think, a series about this. I just want to talk about different aspects of this. So if you would let me know what you would like me to talk more about, or if you have questions about this topic, um, put them in the comments in the video for me. So if you are ready to go deeper, um, if you're looking for like some more specific support for you to just go really quickly through this whole thing. You're not like wanting to try to figure it out yourself. You're really wanting that support one-on-one. -on -one. I do have one-on-one -on -one coaching spaces available. Um, so if you're like wanting to really get that guidance and like not waste time trying to get from A to B, you know, you wanna find this man, you wanna really understand yourself and love yourself and trust yourself and feel worthy in yourself and stop falling for these unavailable men and attract the man of your dreams, that man who is actually ready for commitment, who is really truly right for you, who feels so good to you. Um, I have one-on-one -on -one spaces available, send me a message. Um, we will set up a time to chat and just make sure that it is a fit, mutually aligned fit for us. Um, you know, I had a client I posted about yesterday um, who just got into a relationship with the, like her dream man, <laughs> like the man of her dreams and better than she had even told me what she wanted. Um, and she was super frustrated when she came to me with the men that she was meeting with online dating. It felt like there was no one there for her. It felt so frustrating, it felt like she'd been trying and it wasn't working. And, um, she was meeting these men who were just not the men that she wanted to meet. So we worked on her dating profile. Uh, we made that really a match for the man that she wanted to meet. She started to have all these men messaging her literally just from the profile change who were such better matches for her and they were recognizing her as like an ideal woman for them from her profile. And we worked on her communication with men like um, on the apps, in uh, text, in person, um, but a lot of the communication, just like how do I do this in a different way than I've been doing that pushing, masculine, efforting, trying, proving, working really hard way, but in a way that I can receive a really good man and instead of trying to go get it and force it and make it happen, um, but actually just draw that man in, receive that man, um, allow him to show up for me, allow him to see the woman that I am, this really high value woman, worthy of his commitment, worthy of his effort and time. So we work on that piece. Um, we work a lot on beliefs and triggers and just all this stuff that can get in the way of um, being able to show up as your highest self, um, being able to really trust yourself and know that you're worthy, um, love yourself, know that you can actually meet a good man, um, beliefs about men, all of that stuff that just can like gunk it up and totally get in the way with a man and sabotage with the man accidentally. And then I taught her my process uh, with men, right? So from, you know, meeting that guy to being in a committed relationship, how do you navigate all of that, right? 
um, so that you can really be in your power, stay in your feminine, um, not have to put in all that efforting and trying and performing. Like we're gonna take all that off the table. So I think this client I'm talking about, she met her man um, and then within, I think it was like a month and a half, he asked her to be his official girlfriend, to be in a relationship um, because he literally told her he was afraid that if he didn't ask her that she would be claimed by another man. Um, and that's a super fast amount of time, um, you know, and this is kind of the result of what happens when you really step into that high value worthiness, um, feminine space, right? So if you want to work with me, send me a message. Um, you know, I want that for each and every single one of you. I want you to feel so secure and so happy and so loved and so seen by the right man for you. And I would love to guide you through all of these pieces so that you can attract that right man and have that happen with ease and be in your worth, be in that feminine, which is so much more easeful than masculine. And it's going to get you what you actually want with a man. Um, be able to trust yourself, to know your worth and your worthiness, not just as like a concept, but actually something you truly feel in your body, like as truth for you and have that magnetism with high value men. Um, so send me a message if you are interested um, and please comment here if you have questions, suggestions, ideas. Um, I'd love to get back and respond to all of you. Um, so bye.